cover. How could you not tell your own brother what you do? I'm a spy! You know you should keep that quiet. Bobby, I need your help. Oh, these heated seats make you feel like you've pissed yourself. There are no heated seats. While I was watching this, there were moments where I was practically falling over laughing, but then times where I actually had to look away yeah. from the screen. Is there an art to knowing just how far to push things so that the audience is comfortably horrified? Yeah, I mean, my, my issue with cinema is that I get bored very, very easily. And uh, on the rare times I actually buy a movie ticket, I end up often leaving, you know. It's probably because of my ADD. But, so my thing is, if I'm gonna make a film, it's gonna be something that I would watch and would make me laugh. And yes, that balance with going just far enough without going too far is, is the skill. One that I'm not always <laughs> adept at, but yeah. Making people see, I mean, you know, what I wanted to do in this film is give the audience the opportunity to see things they'd never seen before in any other movie, which I think you'd agree. Certainly haven't seen <laughs> yes. anything like this before in yeah. my life. <laughs> so that's it. You know, you know, when I was a kid, I was really into Python, Monty Python. And I remember just sitting there with mouth agape. And sometimes I was laughing hysterically and sometimes I was rocking in my seat, looking away. And it was a collective, wild experience with hundreds of other people. And I suppose in some way I'm kind of emu trying Absolutely, to emulate that. for sure. Yeah. This was almost stamped with an NC-17 rating and you successfully fought against that. Have you developed a way of dealing with the political correctness and censorship that I imagine would be really stifling, you know, on a creative level? Yeah, I mean, the crazy thing about the MPAA, you know, the Motion Picture Association, mm -hmm. for those people out there, is that extreme violence is fine. You can have kids oh, yeah. shooting other kids mm -hmm. in a film, that's great, it's a PG-13. But if there's anything remotely sexual, then it's immediately NC-17. And um, there's one scene in particular where they were arguing that it, it involved bestiality. And I, I basically had to read them the definition of bestiality, because the problem is these people are unelected. They represent the morality of the American public, and they didn't actually understand the terms. So um, basically, it's a it's a to and fro, and essentially, if I know there's a three and a half minute scene that I want in the movie that's yeah. out there and great, I normally submit a nine minute uh, scene, and then there's about six months of fighting. Six months. There we go. I've given it away. You're happy now. <laughs> I understand that in researching you know, for the story, you actually visited some struggling Northern English towns and you feature real working class people in this. Could you speak to the way that you weave in a social co uh, consciousness, I guess, into your comedy? Yeah, I mean, listen, ultimately the idea of the films are to be hilarious, you know, and entertaining, but Again, I'm making films for me and for the fans, and I think the interesting thing about James Bond was who would be his brother? And so I quite like this, you know, he's the symbol of the English establishment. So his brother would be, he's kind of the villain of the British underclass. So in Britain, and here as well, you know, people like Trump, they vilify the kind of welfare cheats, the people who are the takers from society. And so he is the villain you know, in, as is perceived, the kind of taker. And I wanted to take somebody from the bottom of society who's even vilified at the bottom of society. You know, not even the working class, but the non-working class, the scrounging class, and make him a hero. And say, what would happen if actually James Bond was, came from that stock? Mm -hmm. And these guys have been given these two different opportunities, and this is what happened with one set, this is what happened with the other guy. You know, is it nature or nurture? And then there's some hilarious scenes as well. So the fate that befalls Trump in the film, that's not just for shock value. There's a message there. This is a message film. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, listen, Trump's enemy are the nobbies of the world. Yeah. So um, there is some kind of vindication, you know, mm. but uh, it does have a fairy tale ending and Trump does contract HIV. <laughs> <laughs>